Hello everyone, this is Lana Yelenyev, uh, Chairperson for Neurodiversity Foundation, and I'm very glad to have with me here Will Wheeler, the uh, Director of the Dyslexic Evolution, and today we will be talking about his work and his lens on neurodiversity. Will, thank you very much for uh, being part of the Neurodiversity Pride Day celebration. Not a problem. Thank you so much for having me today. It is a little bit early in the morning where I am, so I apologize if my um, eyes are still slightly <laughs> shut, but I'm, I'm getting there. So thank you very much for having me. So tell, tell us first about your work. Uh, what is this dyslexic uh, evolution all about? And yeah. how, did you, you know, how did you get into it? Yeah, great. Well, obviously I'm dyslexic myself and for myself, I found that um, especially when I was in the workplace and all that type of stuff, I just didn't have any support or there was a, a real lack of understanding of what um, dyslexia was in the workplace. Um, mm -hmm. How was I, you know, a lot of the time I was being put into situations where I just couldn't succeed or um, didn't have opportunities to be able to prove how good I really was of what I did. Um, so for me, what I, and, and, and then that went into business and everything. I, I decided that um, I um, wanted to get business coaches and leadership coaches, which I did, but they weren't dyslexic and they didn't really understand my way of thinking, which made things really difficult. So that was when I decided to create the Dyslexic Evolution that is all about helping and developing um, dyslexic people who want to become elite professionals in their careers because mm -hmm. we're seeing a whole lot of stuff on social media, the news, all that of all these great business people who are doing fantastic things. And a lot of the time it's contributed because they are dyslexic. So that's what we're all about. Um, so that was why I, I, I originally first got into it. So it has been a bit of an interesting road so far, but we're getting there. Oh, thank you for sharing that. We definitely, definitely need uh, more, you know, more of this in the world. And like what you said, the, the lens is very different, right? Especially mm. when uh, you have, yeah, what is normal, you know, what is the norm, yeah, totally. which is very much different. And I love that your approach is really focusing also on leadership. I think yeah. that it's one aspect that is highly needed, you know, for uh, new neurodivergence to see themselves as leaders. Mm. So let's get on to the questions. Um, what do you see from the field you are now, you know, in, in, this, in the sense of the state of neurodivergent individuals? Mm. So, so how I see the state of neurodiverse individuals, and that's what you're saying there, right? Yes. So uh, what I'm finding with a lot of neurodiverse individuals, it really depends on the individual themselves. Um, see, a lot of the time I'm obviously dealing with a lot of um, uh, dyslexic people, not, um, you know, autistic people or, you know, other types of neurodiverse people. And what I'm finding with um, uh, a lot of the people I'm working with, or even a lot of the people I know all over the world, um, it, it's really interesting to see a lot of the problems that we all struggle with are all the same. So it's, it's interesting because it's like, okay, well, the reason why we're struggling in certain workplaces isn't because our dyslexia. A lot of the time it's because of the lack of understanding mm. of what we have, of what, who we are and, and what we're able to achieve. So a lot of the time I'm finding that's holding us back a lot of the time. Don't get me wrong. I've, I meet so many great people and they're able to achieve so many great things, but sometimes still we're finding in certain workplace situations that people uh, just do not understand us. And, and you know what, even for myself as a high executive um, working in with other companies or being on committees and all that type of stuff, um, I'm still finding it's just they have a lot of 
people just have no idea about neurodiversity, which can make it very hard for us as neurodivergent individuals. Mm. Uh, I'm glad that you've surfaced that, you know, that lack of understanding and awareness. Mm. Um, in our work with Neurodiversity Foundation, we see that this is that crucial uh, foundation mm. in terms of spreading the, the yeah, not, you know, the awareness of neurodiversity mm. to people. And I think this is also one part of the challenge, right? Um, the, the, how, do we, how do we spread that awareness and understanding? Mm. And from your experience, especially, especially on the dyslexic field, um, mm. what do you think are the, you know, the neurodivergent individuals challenged with, especially in tackling diversity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think a big problem is, so if, if we go back to the lack of understanding, because of the lack of understanding, a lot of people are rich, uh, to start off with write, write us off, okay? So they um, will be like, okay, this guy's dyslexic, and they'll think, oh, you, you know, this person can't read or write, or they can't do this, they can't do that where really we should be looking at what they can do because a lot of our strengths a lot of the time are a lot stronger than what we can't do. Now, a lot of the things that we may not be able to do, that doesn't mean we can't do it. It just mm. might mean we need another way or a different route to be able to do that. So I think workplaces need to understand that, um, you know, if you get someone who is dyslexic or, or, you know, on the other end of neurodiversity, what is it those people need to be able to excel in their jobs? So, you know, that's what I'm been finding so far um, in regards to that. Mm. Uh, and from, from your experience, what is, you know, what's the best way to to share that with the, uh, yeah, especially in the workplace. I can imagine that this is such a big struggle, struggle in terms of uh, understanding people in the workplace and then uh, adding to that the misconceptions that people have. You've, mm. you know, you've mentioned about uh, people thinking, oh, they can't read or mm. uh, they wouldn't be able to do these things mm. as compared to uh, looking at their strengths, right? Mm. So what what uh what are the ways that you've seen so far uh that that help neurodivergent individuals tackle adversity in the workplace well obviously uh, myself and my company working towards leadership i think that's probably going to be play a huge role um I don't, I don't want to plug myself here, but I've actually, I'm actually about to release my, my new book, um, the book of dyslexic, uh, sorry, the book of dyslexic motivation in pictures. And it's towards the end of the book, I really talk about um, the importance of, um, you know, dyslexic leadership or, you know, it could be neurodiverse leadership because what you're going to find is when you've got people like us in those higher positions who understand what the struggles that we go through understand what it is that um we may be able to do you'll probably find we'll be able to exceed a lot quicker the big thing around neurodiversity as well um and you know so many um neurodivergent individuals get this is our different ways of thinking so when you've got people like us in leadership positions, they're going to be able to utilize us a lot better to be able to excel a lot better within so many different environments. So for me, the biggest thing I think is, is leadership. Leadership plays a huge role um, because um, um, it's, there's so many advantages to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said, you know, you don't want to plug. For us, it's like, please plug, you know, please <laughs> yeah. share. Mainly because this is also why we're doing these uh, interviews. Mm. Um, we want more voices to come out to the forefront. Mm. Um, we, we want, you know, experts to be sharing what, um, experts like you to be sharing mm. what, what it, is it that you've seen in the workplace that has worked for uh, dyslexic individuals. Mainly because 
yeah, like like what I said a while ago, the norm is very much tilted to you mm. know uh, people in the workplace that are within what you would call neurotypical. Yeah, and, totally. And how about yeah? How about for neurodivergence? You know, how can how can we make the workplace as something um, uh, not just fun but also engaging for, mm. for individuals? And and I like really that lens of um, leadership as that mm. way of tackling adversity. Can See, you tell us more about it? You know, tell yeah. Us more well, about well, the thing the thing the is. The thing is, especially with leadership as well, when you're a leader of, of anything really, what you, what you really want to be trying to do is develop more leaders. So if you've got, um, if you've, even if you've got a, a neurodiverse workplace, you've got neurotypicals and you've got um, neurodivergent um, people in that workplace there, there's so many benefits to having a, a, a dyslexic leader, for example. Because for starters, if you've got people under you who are looking up to you as a leader and they might be neurotypical, what you're going to be able to do is open their mind to your way of thinking, your way of doing things, that dyslexic way of doing things. Or it could be, you know, I've met, I've met like other neurodiverse, like um, I've actually met a lady who's a um, head of diversity and inclusion of one of the the big top four uh, accounting firms in the world and she's autistic and I tell you what you would not even know she's able to just be so good at what she does and it, it, it does it plays such a huge role and it opens people's minds up to hey look if someone's neurodiverse that, that doesn't hold them back that means they can do so many great things and then also, too, for the neurotypical people, it's opening them up to like, wow, look what she can do. I could probably do the same. So you can see that there's this growth. And, you know, in a way, that's why our company is called the Dyslexic Evolution, because what it should be about is continuous growth, you know, because us as neurodiverse people, we don't want to get a job and just sit there our minds are ticking over so much. We've got so many great things happening that we want to do something different. We want to develop in other areas and growth and evolution is going to be key for anyone in that workplace. So that's why for me, leadership is the number one, the golden child right there. <laughs> well, I think this answers uh, the last question, but I would still want to, you know, for you to emphasize on it. So totally. what do you think will be the best opportunities for growth that you're seeing right now in the field for people who are neurodiverse? Growth. Um, I'm just trying to see how I can best answer that. I think about the best thing for, so going back to leadership there, but also to, um, I think um, organizations, you know, they really need to have development programs. I'm seeing so many um, neuro, and I get people all over the world reaching out to me, telling me about their programs and all that. But it's not about just getting these people jobs because, you know, we can be utilized in so many different ways. And it's really about getting these people jobs and letting these people develop within your organization. Because what's happening a lot of the time is these very, very intelligent people are getting into organizations, not being given the, um, the tools or the support mm. or the guidance or even that um, development there to be able to go on and do great things in their career. They're sitting back going, Hey, look, what's going on? Yeah. Stop this. I'm going to go start my own company because no one's given me any opportunity here. Um, and then what ends up happening is those people end up building multi-million if not multi-billion dollar companies which is fantastic but what i'm trying to get at is if workplaces could prevent those people leaving in the first place and be able to use these great skills think how many great things some big organizations could do from that 
So that's what I, I think could be a great thing if, you know, people could understand that. And, you know, by having more, dis, more neurodiverse leaders within the organization, they're going to understand that and they're going to be looking at, okay, let's hire some more neurodiverse people. I'm not yeah. saying that we need to employ a whole workforce of neurodiverse. We need, we, it needs to be diverse. You need to have neurotypical and neurodiverse, but all feed off each other. You know, so that's what, that's my, that's what I feel anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Will. This uh, interview has really, you know, shared that lens of how important leadership is in the field of neurodiversity and at the same time in yeah providing opportunities for neurodivergent individuals to really grow and and thrive in the workplace so thank you very much for saying yes to, to this short interview we're looking forward to hearing more from you in you know in the next activities that we will be doing with neurodiversity foundation not a problem not a problem and before yeah before we end yes please do share you know do you share about your book what are the activities from the dyslexic evolution that you can share with us well the cool thing with uh, my book the book of dyslexic motivation and pictures is um, you know i share a lot of um, you know, a lot about my life to begin with, all that type of stuff. And then the cool thing about it, it, it actually goes into um, um, what I sort of really preach in the dyslexic evolution. So I talk a lot about how to build on your career, how to network properly, because it can be quite daunting for us to be able to, to network yeah. in a large environment if we don't have those tools or even the courage to be able to do that. So finding different ways to be able to achieve the same goal um, and really come out on top in the end there. So. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a book that you can take a lot away from it. I talk about how to utilize LinkedIn um, at a very high standard. So being able to attract the right people. But more than anything, what we want to do is create opportunities for ourselves. Um, the, the hardest thing is for especially dyslexic people is it can be very hard to find opportunities because when people know that you're dyslexic, they're thinking, oh, this is going to be a problem yeah. where really it can be a solution to a problem. Um, so that's what the book's about. It's really about rising above and getting on top. So I hope people enjoy it. Thank you. We'll definitely ask for the, the link and then add it here. Again, yeah, totally. Will, thank you very much for sharing your lens. It's very important the message that you're bringing out there we need more leaders neurodivergent leaders in the workplace and what better way to yeah to uh help budding leaders uh than being guided by someone who understands what what it takes you know so thank you totally. for for being that voice and we're looking Not. forward to hearing more from you not a problem. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Um, hopefully one day I can get back over to Europe there. Um, hopefully one day soon. So thank you so much for yes. having me. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.